trout just are like, fuck it, I'm going to the ocean. So they live in here and they feed on shrimp and Hello. If you're new here, I'm Shauna. Otherwise, welcome back to my channel. It's been a whole week since I filmed anything. Tyler and I drove back to Boston. Came home to a new phone case. My brother sent us pictures of Nobu food while I sat at home. My dad sends us pictures of his breakfast every other day and pictures of his new artwork. And random foods he's eating, like these black peanuts. A lot of Asian veggies. Mila thought this laundry bag was her bed. Kubo being Kubo. I picture myself walking straight to the sea. Laughing as the lights come rolling to my knees. What a place to be. Made dumplings. Was this a video? Side by side. My mom sent everyone this pic, which looked a lot like our actual Thanksgiving pic. Hi, Dad. Hello. Say hi to the camera. Hey. Hey. <laughs> This bread. <laughs> it was my first real time making bread. I didn't realize that it's actually a recipe for two loaves. And since so it's one massive loaf. How is this cut? What do you think? Huh? You think it's cut? That looks totally good. Robert Tyson? Yeah. Alright, I'm just gonna serve people for a Robert Tyson! Yeah, Robert Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like three in a pot. was me hanging out with the dogs and eating Thanksgiving leftovers. Today I'm getting my eyebrows microbladed. I'm really excited to do this. I just want my eyebrows to be just like fuller, fluffier, and just more, just more dramatic, I guess. Yeah, I love my eyebrows right now, but I just wanted to do this for fun. So I don't like wearing a lot of makeup. I feel like even if it is the greenest, cleanest, whatever, best makeup ever, I just still feel like there's something on my face and it feels like, um, like too much. So that's why I'm excited to get my eyebrows permanently altered, or not permanently, semi-permanently. So it's supposed to last only a few years. And I'm going to Lucky's in Cambridge to see Alicia Dane. And yeah, I'll bring you along. Oh, and hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I spent the week just with my mom and brother. It was super chill, kind of took like a vacation and didn't open my computer much, which has been really nice, so. Yeah, but now I'm back and we are getting our eyebrows done. <laughs> okay, one layer done. <laughs> Yay! You keep me safe from their study getting through. Please be fine. It's too late. <laughs> Abra. Whoa. <laughs> there might be a little bit in here, but yeah. That's your new eyebrow. Thank you. <laughs> cool. While waiting for my mom and brother to come pick me up, I did what I always do, which is look at how grocery stores display their fruits and vegetables. H Mart had such an impressive collection of kimchi and Hello Kitty toilet paper and these super cute sponges that of course are displayed on top of a fridge of dumplings. Oh my god! Whoa, I am still getting used to the way that they look. They just look so different than before, but I'm really excited. So cool, you can see all the individual lines. 
Oh my god, craziness. Oh. oh my gosh. So I had a really good experience. The one thing I will warn people who want to get their eyebrows microbladed is that it can hurt. Like for me, it hurt a lot. I think that normally when I watch all those TikToks, people would have like a bunch of like numbing gel on their eyebrow area for a while before they get started with the actual like needle part. Alicia just went right in and started to microblade. I don't think there was any numbing cream on. So she put it on before she did the second layer. So that like felt much more manageable. But the first layer, oh my gosh, like I, she said that I might accidentally like form some tears and I definitely did in each eye. Um, not because I was crying, but because it was, there was just like pressure and pain. But anyways, it, it was over before it felt too bad. Like my eyebrows look so, wow. Chad, my little brother, told me that I look like Emily in Paris and I was like, thank you. <laughs> and my mom says I look more Korean, which I guess is like, is great. <laughs> I don't know. The whole process was pretty fast. I was kind of surprised. It was supposed to be an hour and a half. Or it wasn't supposed to be. You block off an hour and a half for the appointment. And it only ended up being like an hour and 15 minutes. We talked in the beginning to figure out what I wanted. I told her I just wanted something really fluffy and that I was okay going pretty dark. I knew that I would be like a little bit shocked right after it happened and right when I see it for the first time. And I know I would get used to it and like want a slightly darker, more dramatic look. She said that what takes the longest time is really just drawing out the eyebrows and making sure that the design is perfect. And so she drew them on and I didn't have any complaints. I totally trusted her because I don't like know how you're supposed to map out an eyebrow or anything like that. But yeah, she just drew them and then she started to needle them in. <laughs> and yeah, so crazy. I cannot sweat. I have to avoid water, which is kind of ridiculous because it's raining a lot today and I had to meet my mom in the grocery store, didn't have an umbrella or anything and tried to just like use my hood over my eyebrows to protect them. Yeah, I hope I didn't get any water on them. So I just have to clean them with a cotton swab every two hours for the first day and then put a light layer of Aquaphor on. It's so cool because in all of the microblading videos I've seen, They've said that your eyebrows will scab and fall off and it'll look all weird for a few days and that's what you're supposed to expect. But Alicia was saying that that doesn't have to happen. You don't have to go through the whole scabbing process and what you could do instead is do this whole uh, swabbing aquaphor process to avoid that whole thing. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the rest of today. Um, I might just like continue this kind of like vacation until I actually go back to Maine when I'm away from family. When I'm with my family, all I want to do is just like really spend time with them. So I might just keep doing that. What's all you got? Turkey wrap. Nice. It'd be good with like cucumber. iPhone 12 Pro Max in the mail. I had an iPhone X before. We did a trade-in and with all the deals combined and whatnot, this was essentially free. We just had to pay sales tax, I think. It is so fancy. It's so, oh, okay, that was a bad idea. It is so much bigger than my iPhone X. Oh, it's very cold. What do you do? Okay, I 
actually I don't think it was totally free I don't really know because my mom took care of the bill because this is a birthday present to me but I think it was almost free but again I upgraded from the pro to the pro max so I'm gonna guess that my mom still had to pay money <laughs> thanks mom <laughs> Now I'm transferring everything over from this phone to this phone. <sighs> so today is day five. It is Friday. I got my eyebrows done Monday. And this is the stage where they would start scabbing. But my eyebrow specialist recommended that I do this post-care method that prevents scabbing, which is really cool. So if anyone out there is thinking about getting microblading, I would consider asking your specialist about ways to not have to go through the scabbing process because I know it can be pretty, pretty, just not the most comfortable as your eyebrows scab and fall off. I am loving the way they look. I have noticed that right here, it looks like it's like disappeared a little bit. Another part of the healing process is that your eyebrows will disappear seemingly I think after day 10 or around there. So what happens is that like your healing skin starts to cover your eyebrows and that will cover the ink since it's thicker than regular skin. After a few days your regular skin will come back up to the surface and will replace the healing skin. I, I don't know even what I'm saying. And then you will see your eyebrows again and the ink will no longer be covered. And then on January 5th, I'm getting a touch-up session anyway. So they're going to fix up anything that didn't heal perfectly. Yeah, that's what they look like. Um, I totally forgot that on the first few days, your eyebrows are even darker than they're meant to be. So that's why those first few days, like I'm glad I didn't freak out too much. There were definitely moments where I was like, what? did I do? <laughs> so I'm glad now it looks a bit more natural. I've gotten totally used to them as well. I was editing a video of clips I'd taken before Thanksgiving and I was like, who is that? Like that girl does not have any eyebrows. So I'm so glad I did this. It's just been fun and yeah, I just really like the way they look. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the post-care method that my eyebrow specialist recommended and that has prevented me from having any scabbing or anything like that. So I just took a shower and I'm gonna take two Q-tips and get them a little bit damp. So you wet them and then kind of squeeze out the excess moisture. And then you just gently wipe your eyebrow. You're wiping away lymph, which I'm not even totally sure what that is. And as well as any like pigment and anything that just shouldn't be there. It's important to wipe in the other direction of your eyebrow growth too. But a little bit of pigment, I don't know if you can tell, is still coming off of the Q-tip. I think that's supposed to be normal. I know at least in the first few days after you get them done when you're wiping like that, some pigment will come off, some excess pigment, but I don't know, who knows? At least I have a touch-up session, so everything will be fixed. Toss that out. And then afterwards, you take a tiny bit of aquaphor my eyebrow specialist said to use about one grain of rice uh the size of one grain of rice of aquaphor per eyebrow approximately so you just want a really thin layer and you smooth it on with your clean hands and that's it so on the first day i did this every two hours on the second day i did it uh, morning, midday, and evening, and then every day since I'm doing morning and evening. For, and this is for the first nine days, I wanna say. And now I wanna show you my new skincare routine. I went a little bit crazy and I bought a bunch of things from YesStyle. I've changed all of my skincare over to Korean skincare since I was finishing up my previous products anyway and it was time to buy new ones. Basically bought everything that Hiram recommended. So I've been loving this Calendula Complete Cleansing Oil and then I will use the Isentry Green Tea Fresh Toner afterwards and then uh, not that one, but oh. <laughs> I have these four. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I have these four serums that I kind of just alternate between. 
So we got this beta glucan one, this, I honestly forget what's even in these two and what the ingredients do, but apparently these are really good and just very clean. And then I have the black snail restore serum. They've all been amazing. And then I will use this Perito Centella Green Level Sunscreen. Oh wait, no. <laughs> and then I will use a moisturizer. So this Centella Calming Gel Cream has been amazing. It feels so good on my skin. This Robectin Clean is also really great. I know Hiram's really obsessed with this. I'm pretty sure this was also in his 2020 Best Moisturizers list. I think for me, I like how this has just a little bit more to it. Whereas this, I can see why it would be really good for um, either very sensitive or just like kind of oily skin. It's like very, it's kind of minimalist in a way. And this just adds a little bit more something, something in there. <laughs> okay, and then I go into the Perito sunscreen or the Dear Claire's sunscreen that I also got. When you first get your eyebrows microbladed, you can't let them touch water, at least not directly. So when I shower, I just try to shower like with my head like tilted back like that. It's very awkward. It doesn't really work because I can't seem to stop the water from shooting off the front of my head onto my eyebrows, but I'm trying to do my best. And so that's why I've been washing my face after my showers, after I clean up my eyebrows too, so that they're protected by a fresh layer of Aquaphor. First, I'm using this. Okay, this has been amazing. So I get blackheads, unfortunately, and I feel like this is really helping to just control any like um, imbalances in my skin and just clean really thoroughly. Even though it's an oil-based cleanser, it just comes off right away with water. It's kind of crazy. So I am taking one pump now because I have to be careful to avoid my eyebrow area. I just massage it in. The other amazing thing about Korean skincare is that compared to most luxury American skincare brands, it is so much cheaper and apparently has even better ingredients and quality, according to Hiram. He talked about how there are some really powerful ingredients, such as centella water, centella asiatic leaf water, and he said that when he is able to find it in American products, it's in very, very small quantities versus this is just 70% Centella Asiatic leaf water. So that is awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna wash off the cleansing oil from here down, and then I'm gonna use a cotton ball to wipe off everything that's on top, just so I can be precise and avoid getting my eyebrows wet. Cotton ball, squeezing out excess water wiping away all of that cleansing oil. Now it's time for my toner. So I'm using the Isentry Green Tea Toner. So just pat this on. And because these products are relatively affordable, um, everything's kind of in between like 20 and $30. Um, I'm not afraid to use the products pretty generously on my skin. So I'll even take some of this toner and put it on my neck back of my neck even, it just feels good. My ears and just all around. My forehead. Apparently green tea is also really good for your skin, according to Hiram, and a lot of American skincare products have such a tiny amount of it in their products, even though they're marketed as green tea, etc. products, but apparently this just has a lot in it and it's really great. I don't know how much is in here. Which serum do I want to use today? I'm gonna go with the Calm Serum from Nine Wishes. I have no idea what's in here, but I think the packaging is actually so pretty. Um, so I've just been using essentially a full uh, dropper of it. So squeeze that on there. And just rub it all over. Even now, my skin's already looking so dewy and glowy just with all the skincare. And then, Feeling the Centella Common Gel Cream today. I've talked about it so much. And then, last but not least, I'm putting a little bit of my strawberry salve on here on my lips. Oh, right, sunscreen. 
even though Maine has been having a UV index of one consistently. And that is my new skincare routine. Look at how shiny my skin is. Like that's amazing, I love it. My eyebrows are looking great, even though they still need to fully heal and they'll probably disappear. So that is my current post-care routine for my eyebrows as well as my skincare routine. So I like collecting all these little branches to use in our fire as a way to kind of save some of the firewood we have. The firewood we have is so dry, so it just burns really quickly. So it's kind of nice to have some wood that is like a little bit less treated so that it burns a little longer. days since I got my eyebrows done and they are starting to look like they're disappearing especially right here and like right there and another piece over there I think apparently it's normal they're supposed to disappear so yeah that's what they look like now it's only a little bit noticeable I feel like now that I've told you it's very noticeable but otherwise I don't mind too much also We've just been up here in Maine and not seeing anyone, so I'm not worried about it at all. It's a super rainy day today. Actually, I think the rain stopped. <laughs> but we're supposed to get a lot more rain. And so I've just been enjoying some Greek salad, watching Hannah, Hannah Duggan here as she makes over her cabin because that is my dream to own a cabin. Drinking some tea, I got the fire going. This is stuff we foraged. White pine that had fallen over and then all this miscellaneous pine branches that were just scattered across the property. Since Tyler and I don't have pets or kids, we tend to the fire as if it is our kid. No. <laughs> so it's like 7 p.m. and all of the power went out because there's a hurricane going on and Tyler decided to go full camping mode. He is cooking bone marrow with potatoes and rosemary. So funny. Yeah, it is just really dark in here. The camera makes it look like it's not as dark, but it is super dark. <laughs> Your little oven mitt. <laughs> Apparently 200 people in this town and the town next to us don't have power. So it's a lot of people considering the total population here. We have this ancient candle going. It's the only candle we have left. And here is my chicken. So today's Monday. It has been one full week since I got my eyebrows done. And it just looks a little bit patchy. There hasn't been any scabbing though, which is really cool. I actually need to go buy a new bottle of Aquaphor because that's what I've been putting on my eyebrows after cleaning them to prevent scabbing and to promote healing. Right here is the most prominent kind of patchiness where it's just kind of gone. I feel asked to get that touched up during my touch-up session on January 5th. I feel like right now it looks really natural minus the patchiness, but I actually did like the darker look of like four days after I got my eyebrows done or something like that. I think this looks nice. I really like the shape, but I do like a more like dramatic, bold eyebrow look. That is the update for one week and the healing process I think is supposed to take at least two weeks, maybe even more than that. So yeah, we are halfway through, but it's really nice not having to go through scabbing because I feel like that can be pretty uncomfortable.
A lot of times when they dump trout into rivers with the ocean nearby, mm -hmm. the trout just are like, fuck it, I'm going to the ocean. So they live in here and they feed on shrimp and sand eels and crabs. Are you gonna put this in your video? Deer tracks. Maybe a coyote? So this is the end of our driveway. Really nice to be able to go for a little walk down the driveway and back again. And the house is back there. Oh. Um, so we have right here a balsam fir and you can tell because their little bristle thingies look like they're suction cupped on. making salads together. It's very cute and aesthetically pleasing. Wow, Tyler. <laughs> nice plating. Thank you. <laughs> Tyler grated these locally grown carrots. Very beautiful. I'm making my salad over here. This vinaigrette's pretty good, and um, Mackenzie just does lemon juice and maple syrup, and that's really good too. That's the new don't have And there is the salad. It's huge. <laughs>